Christmas. Happy holidays, friends. Welcome back to my channel, Michelle Gay Science Teacher, where it's all about science. Today we are doing a Christmas challenge, or you can call it a holiday challenge. This STEM challenge is called Sleigh and Slope, where we're going to make a sleigh and we're going to make a slope to test out different types of forces. Newton laws of motion, kinetic and potential energy. Are you ready to have some fun? Well, let's get started. First, you need to design your sleigh. You can take simple materials like cardstock, cardboard, cereal box, any type of sturdy material and make your sleigh. It can be larger than this or smaller than this. You can add craft sticks or popsicle sticks to be the base part of your sleigh or you can leave them off. You can be as creative as you want with your sleigh. You can decorate it. You can make it high in places. You can look at different sleighs on the website and come up with your design. Your challenge is that your sleigh must carry some cargo. And for us, we're going to use simple tiny ornaments as the cargo. And I would suggest you could use ornaments. You could use Lego people if you have Legos. You can use bows, Christmas bows. But your cargo must stay in the sleigh when going down the slope. When you make your slope, you can leave your slope plain or you can add fall paper like I did or wax paper or plastic or just leave the cardboard. I decided to make my slope and I used an acute angle less than 90 degrees to get that slope effect. The best material to make your slope is going to be some type of cereal box. It can be a larger one than this, but the reason why the cereal box is great is because you can get a better curve than I did with mine. You will have to make sure that your, sl your slope will be able to stand or be able to tape it down so that when you get ready to test out, it doesn't move or fall over. All right, let's get started. We're going to take our slope and sleigh, and I'm going to empty it. I'm going to pull it back so we have enough room for the sleigh to move. Now, you will need a measuring tape so that you can measure the distance of your sleigh, how far it went. We're going to first look at kinetic and potential energy. Remember, kinetic energy is energy that is released where potential energy is energy that is stored. When people are on a sleigh or the cargo is in the sleigh, we have our energy, kinetic energy, and then we have our sleigh when it's at rest and the people are at rest, we have our potential energy. Remember with potential energy, the higher up you are, the more energy is stored. So let's test out our empty sleigh. And we're not going to push, we're just going to let it go. And it stopped here, all right? We're going to measure from this point to the tip of the uh, sleigh where it stopped. So this is 30 centimeters here. I'll put my finger down, bring my ruler, and then we're going to stop at the tip, which is 14 centimeters. So this measures the distance from this point to here, 44 centimeters, right? That was without cargo, and that was our potential and kinetic energy. Now we're going to add cargo. Remember, we have our potential energy. We started right here again. I'll show you at the slope part here at the front. And we're just going to let it go. 
Oh wow, I think it went farther with the cargo. And not only that, my cargo did not fall out, which is awesome. So we're gonna measure here again. Stop at 30, bring it down. Oops, I don't want to touch that. Okay. And the front is here. And 27, which gives us 57 centimeters with cargo. So that's potential and kinetic energy. Now, what occurs when people are uh, slaying out on the snow Friction occurs. Remember what friction is when two things rub together. So you have this rubbing against the uh, sleigh, the bottom part of the sleigh, against this uh, slope part. Well, when you're outside and you're in the snow, when the two rub together, remember with friction it gets warmer. So when the sleigh goes down, and the friction is making it warmer, there's just this little thin, fragile amount of water, which gives it less friction in order to move quickly and accelerate through the snow. So that's the friction part of the sleigh and the slope part of the stem. The next thing we're going to look at is Newton's laws of motion. Remember Sir Isaac Newton came up with three laws of motion and he came up with the term or discovered gravity. Gravity is a force that pulls things down. And of course, when we put our sleigh up here on the slope, it is gravity that pulls it down. But also, we have the Newton laws of motion that says, an object in motion stays in motion. That's his first law. An object at rest, rest stays at rest unless another force acts up on it. So when we let this go, we have the force of gravity acting up on it and pulling it down. Now, if I would have pushed it, that would have been another force acting up on it also. But I didn't push it, remember. I just let it go. So remember, test out your first law of motion. And notice that my uh, sleigh is going farther out. Let's try, let's test and measure this one. So we're back, oops, hit it. So we're back to 30. And we have 30 at the tip exact. So this time it went 60 centimeters. Now, if you notice, my table or my desk is, it looks like it's probably slick. Well, in a way it is. It's not rough. So it does have a sort of a, a, a surface that's easy to move across. If we were to do it against this part, friction would act upon this cloth and it wouldn't go as far. So let's test that out real quick. Oh wow, it didn't even want to go down, did it? Let's try it again. Just a topple over because this had too much friction in order for it to slide and glide on through. There are other Newton laws of motion that you can test out and discover how the slope and sleigh works together based on Sir Isaac Newton laws of motion. This is such a fun activity. So remember, your STEM challenge is to design and create your own sleigh. Your sleigh must be able to hold two passengers or two pieces of cargo. It can be two ornaments, two bows, something related to the holidays. Or you can make two Lego people. Or just use two other little plastic images that you have at home. 
Also, you can just use cardstock, popsicle sticks, you can use cardboard, whatever materials you have around to make this. Then you need to make your slope. When you make your slope, make sure you have an angle on it or curved slope. And also make sure your slope is able to stay in place. You can tape it down. You don't have to make it the way I did. Long as it stay in place, you can tape it to the table or to the floor, and then you're going to test out. Well, I hope you enjoyed this STEM challenge, and I hope you have fun with Slay and Slope having a wonderful Merry Christmas. All right, friends, thank you for joining me today, and I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day, and see you next time on Michelle Gay Science Teacher.